Hello, I'm United States Senator Saxby Chambliss, and welcome back to our weekly YouTube program. You know, this is very serious times in Washington right now. Our country is truly in a financial crisis. Not only are we having annual deficits of one and a half trillion dollars, and they have been for the last two years, there's going to be another one in about that amount this year, but the projection is that we are going to see those kinds of deficits for years to come. That is simply unsustainable, and we can't allow that to happen. In addition to that, we owe today $14.5 trillion as our national debt. That, too, is unsustainable. The public debt of the United States today is approximately 62% of GDP. Some of our friends in Europe, such as Greece and Portugal, have already reached the pinnacle of the relationship between their debt to GDP. And that tipping point that they have reached is going to cause a financial crisis in that country. That tipping point is about 90% of debt to GDP. We must get our fiscal house in order. We must stop spending so much money in Washington. We must reform the entitlements, which are eating up so much of our money. And then we've got to figure out a way to energize and grow our economy so we can put people back to work and we can broaden the tax base by adding more taxpayers, increase revenues without raising taxes, which is something none of us want to see happen and something that should not happen in this country. Today we are voting on a raising of the debt ceiling for our country. I'm opposed to raising the debt ceiling, and I have said all along that unless we secure some meaningful and significant fiscal reforms as a part of the process, I would not vote to raise the debt ceiling. I want to commend both Speaker Boehner and Minority Leader Mitch McConnell on the Senate side for getting what is probably the best deal that they could get under the circumstances with this White House and with the Democratic-controlled Senate. But the deal that they have reached is simply not meaningful in my mind to the point to where I can vote to raise the debt ceiling. We need to send a signal to the marketplace in the form of a $4 trillion deficit reduction package, and that simply is not the case with this proposal. We do get the right to vote on a balanced budget amendment. We do have some significant um, uh, reduction in spending in the way of discretionary spending caps, which are going to be put in place. And all of that is good and all of that is positive. However, I've been in the Senate for going on nine years now. And unfortunately, I have seen the Senate work its way and bus spending caps in previous years, and the enforcement mechanisms haven't changed. There's nothing new in this bill that puts additional enforcement provisions in place, and I am confident that there will be measures undertaken that will allow the spending caps to be broken, and I simply can't, uh, can't allow that to happen under my watch. We're going to proceed to raise the debt ceiling by $2.5 trillion, or at least between the range of $2.1 and $2.4 trillion. That's the largest increase in the debt ceiling we've ever seen in the history of our country. Again, we're, um, uh, we're doing that without achieving significant, substantial fiscal reforms in the way of spending reductions, reforms of entitlements, or energizing the economy to broaden the base by putting people back to work and creating new jobs in an ever thriving U.S. economy. I regret that I was not able to support that package today because I do think that it's very important that the United States pay its bills on a daily basis and that we don't get overextended. I'm very hopeful that we don't blow through this current increase in the debt ceiling in the short term so that we don't have to face this again anytime in the near future. We need to get our house in order by reducing spending. That's why I was a supporter of the cut cap and balance package. That's why I've been a supporter with Republicans and Democrats in trying to craft a package 
that will energize the economy, put individuals back to work, promote corporate expansion so that new jobs can be created. And when we add more taxpayers to the rolls, we can increase those revenues to get back to the point of revenues to GDP that it will take to sustain this economy. Thank you for your tuning in today, and we look forward to staying in touch. God bless you.